Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This is episode number 326, How to Become a Super Ager. Comments on an article in the New York Times. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. When I was in school many years ago, I learned that the human brain is, is made up of component parts uh, and that they're evolutionarily evolutionarily mm-hmm. developed, that we have the old alligator brain, and then we have the midbrain, and then we have the cognitive brain that's out on the cerebellum. And no, that, cerebrum. Cerebrum, okay. thank you. The, and it, see, I'm already getting all this part of our discussion. <laughs> uh, and the more wrinkles that you have on your cerebrum, the more intelligence you have because that's where all the cognitive processes and take place more and it's like area. more wiring more surface area more brilliance and so that was since i have a very wrinkled brain i was finished Considered with brilliant. the study yeah <laughs> they, they used to call that the triune theory uh, of brain development today uh, many of us still believe that i mean you you see Articles in the mass media, you hear people in conversation, they say things about, oh, the alligator brain or the, or the primitive brain, you know, the, all the There's some truth to that. Like base. anything else, there is some truth to that. Where, where, where the physiological like, structure, the hardwired centers of your brain right, are. Where we're, yeah. we're breathing is not, you know, our breathing and, yeah. and our lower functions are not up top. They're right. they're in the mid and lower. In, in and there's some because we can get whacked on the head up top and we won't stop breathe. breathing. Right, yeah, right. Exactly. Brilliant. So God was brilliant. Anyway, or He knew how we were gonna live. Yeah, that's true. So so in any case, this this view also had the view that the brain was formed when you were born and then when you reached your your growth spurt, your height, your adult shape and, and height, then that was the end of growth in your brain. After that, it was all downhill. You just started, nah, brain got smaller. Brain cells start dying. I remember studying in, yeah. in psychology classes in my 20s that my brain was already dying. Right. But your brain's already repairing itself too. Well, that and if you support, no, class. they didn't yeah. because that's in the new theory. Mm-hmm. The new theory is that just like every other organ in your body, you are breaking down old cells that are worthless, throwing them out, and making new ones. Mm-hmm. And we now know the brain does that, too. It does repair itself. Mm-hmm. But they didn't think so for a long time. Right. And that was part of that triune brain thing. Right. That we had all the brain we could get when we were 20. Well, brain injuries are so catastrophic. Right. But they are also catastrophic because when we're not growing, it's harder to reform those paths. Right. So it isn't, it isn't easy and certain, certain um, there's multiple systems for each thing that we do and each thing that we think. And if you hit both of them or three of them, then we're not going to be able to make that come back. Well, That's the part that is Well, and if you have a stroke different. or an injury, head injury, you frequently will suffer from ataxia and aphasia. Mm-hmm. Uh, you lose words. You know, like people, people know what they want. I want a hamburger, but they can't find the words for it. They can't articulate it. And so in, in rehab, one of the things that they try to do is reteach them the language. And sometimes it's because they can't find the language. At other times they have the language, but they don't have the pathway to access the language. And so either way, they try to reform in the brain the language rewire that you need it. to use. Have it re- rewire itself. Rewired means growing, so- growing new neurons and making a different path. Yeah, to access the data bank that was neutralized by the injury. It doesn't always work if you have a big enough injury. No, it doesn't always work. But the point being that the brain is adaptive. It does change. It does grow. It's still alive and vibrant. And so, so thus the article that we read in the New York times recently talking about how to be a super ager. And they were talking about how most of us have encountered uh, someone or even ourselves that as they age, struggles with losing mental acuity. I'm not as sharp. I used to play Jeopardy, and a question would roll out, and man, I know the answer instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Now 
I have to figure out where did I file that answer. I, I, I know instantly that I know and the some answer. Some of us always had to look for where we filed it. <laughs> we had a, it, it's a different way know, to learn. It's, it's a, a different, different memory. Yeah. It's a, I mean, mm-hmm. I had that flash memory. It was a trick mm-hmm. memory. And I could, you know, I don't know if you've ever had to mem- memorize lines for play or memorize things like the Declaration of Independence or uh, what yeah. have you. Those things are really good training exercises. And I would encourage, I, I think we need to go back to memory and recitation in yeah. school. And mm-hmm. I would encourage all of you who are watching, play with the idea of memorizing stuff. Give yourself a task. Make yourself memorize something and then just recite it, deliver it. So he's already getting to the treatment for this or how you become a superager. Superagers are people who are even at older ages, say after 70, definitely up to 90 something, are with it. They can think, they can learn, they do things. They're either mentally or physically mobile or both. Mm -hmm. And they are not just giving up. They're they're not people who just go, oh, I'm old, see ya. I mean, there's some people that do that at 50 because they don't feel well or because their hormones are down. But I mean, I, I took this article to say that basically if you had good health, then how do you stay a superager with your behavior? To me, that's what this said. You have to have good health, eat properly, right? not drink, smoke, do bad things, party all night. Uh, yeah. All those, kind of all those things as a given, but then they they went on to say, as we age, many of us get into a comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And we allow ourselves to sort of coast along and do what is easy, mm-hmm. do what is comfortable. We don't rock the boat. We don't push ourselves Sit to on do the couch, things watch that TV. are different or un- uncomfortable. Or strange. I've, I've watched a number of my friends who have hit 75 mm-hmm. and above who quit traveling. They're too anxious or they don't feel like the energy or they don't feel like they're sharp enough to drive in a city like Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, they don't go anymore. Or they don't go out. I mean, and sometimes there and maybe are physical right. reasons, but like, maybe like eyes but you have to replace that can't it with drive something. at night. Yeah. Yep. Well, but that's the point. If you just retreat into a comfort zone, then your mind will start to atrophy. You'll start to have more gaps in terms of uh, not remembering words mm-hmm. that you were looking for. What was that word? What was that word? I, I just had it. Losing your focus in a conversation. All of a sudden, it's like... What were we talking about? Why did I come in the kitchen? Why am I looking in the refrigerator? Because you're not thinking, you're not using that part of your mind. And so we can age that way. Or yeah. we can choose not we can fight to it. age that way. We can fight it. Do not go gentle into that good night. That's a mm-hmm. quotation I memorized. <laughs> That's uh, <very> good. <laughs> and so this article discusses that. You know, if, if you want to make the choice to be what they call a super ager, there are things that you should do. And they, and they talk about the Marine Corps mentality. Mm-hmm. They say that the Marine Corps, because of all the physical stuff that Marines have to do, they really, really push you to go beyond what you think are your limits. And they say that pain uh, is, now I'm blanking on the word, pain is... I don't know what word you're going for, so I have a hard time remembering it. <laughs> I wrote it in my notes. Well, let's look. Uh, I think... Pain I is get... weakness, leaving the body. Oh, Okay. So pain is weakness leaving the body. You're getting tougher. You're getting stronger. And so tomorrow you can do more push-ups. The day after tomorrow you can do more push-ups. So you can walk further, run further, what have you. Those are Marines. Those are Marines. <laughs> the Those argument, are young, healthy men. The, the argument about the concept is still valid. Mm-hmm. The, the concept is push yourself. Stretch to do what you can do. If you're wheelchair your brown, mm-hmm. uh, bound, then you know, and it can be physical mm-hmm. or mental. Mm-hmm. They say it needs to be both. You need to physically do things, but you also need to mentally do things. Because we know that physically, if you exercise, you have better brain function mm-hmm. for the next 48 hours after you've exercised. Right. So physically, you should be doing something. Even if you're in your wheelchair, you can use, you can lift one or two pound weights with your arms and your ch- and your shoulders. So this is something you can do to get your blood running and to, to push yourself to do something you if haven't you been do doing. That. If you are physically able mm-hmm. to, you should do that. And if it hurts, if it's hard, better. Because mm-hmm. you push against, you have to have something to push against. I, I remember counseling a, an elderly gentleman. And he said, "I in my entire life, I've always needed something to push against. Whether it's the man, the organization, poverty, Whatever mm-hmm. it doesn't, I need something to fight. Most human beings I need have to, have to push against something. Because life is about struggle. The, the argument that we make in psychology is that the organism of our bodies 
is made to restore homeostasis. Right. We're re we, uh, whenever something balance. knocks you out of balance, your physiology works real hard to restore that balance. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in that sort of vegetative, happy little state, mm -hmm. you're not getting out of balance, you aren't getting challenged, your body's not working, your mind's not working. Mm -hmm. So they say you need to create situations where you challenge yourself to work to the point of tiredness, to the point of exhaustion, not to the point of entertainment, excitement, a rush, a high, because you have to go beyond that. In other words, you don't stretch the envelope. You don't reach what the Marines call So the fact pain. that I looked at a crossword puzzle yesterday for mm -hmm. two hours and I couldn't And just you got really frustrated. I got really got frustrated and really mad and I started looking stuff up. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm even willing to cheat before I, have I surrender. Not, well, I'll ask John. See, John's my husband's <laughs> always my husband's always done crossword puzzles like really fast, yeah. and he just he has New York Times. It's, that's Sad why we buy the New York his, Times. It's his one skill. <laughs> I won't tell him that you said that. He, but he he's I mean he's sharp and he knows a vast amount of information. So yeah. so he does that, and and so we always did the cryptography. I'm good at that, yeah. but not great. Still There's different me. strengths. So I do that. So then Kids I decided. Like mastermind, mm -hmm. you know, where, where the little color coded mm -hmm. symbols, and you have mm -hmm. to figure out somebody's code, yeah. and you have so that's many it. 10 trials yeah. to get it. You know, any of those kind of things that stretch you. Well, I never did crossword puzzles. You. So now I do them because it's a challenge. Right. And I'm ticked because he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand that, or he thinks I'm so stupid because I just can't do it. Okay. So now I'm challenged. So now this is going to keep me alive. <laughs> well, th this article was written by Dr. Lisa Feldman, who's a professor at Northeastern University, and she's written a book about this as well. Mm -hmm. And her contention is that we need to challenge ourselves and push ourselves if we want to stay sharp as we age, if we want mm -hmm. to stay mentally sharp mm -hmm. and alive. And we actually agree with that and, and would encourage you to think about that and push yourself. You know, you, you need to get off your duff and make yourself physically exercise and mentally exercise. Mm -hmm. Learn a new language. I, I used to mm -hmm. counsel middle-aged men who suddenly were alone. Their wife died or they got mm -hmm. divorced and they were just kind of mm -hmm. vegetating. And I really worked with them on learning to create new pathways for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't follow the ruts of habit. So you got to break habits of thinking, of perception, of expectation. And you've got to embrace the fact that you're in a new world. So I would give them simple assignments, things like take your wallet that you always put in your left hip pocket, put it in your right hip pocket. Uh, lay out clothes tonight when you go to bed that you're going to put on in the morning. Then when you get up in the morning, close your eyes, don't open your eyes, go into the bathroom, take your shower, brush your teeth, come back and get dressed without ever opening your eyes. Things like that that force you to think about what <laughs> I thought doing, about doing even that. simple I might things. kill myself if I did that. I'd well, probably fall over something. It is a challenge in the beginning <laughs> yeah. because it forces you to pathway. use different senses. That's it a good forces idea. you to think about what you're doing, to stay in the moment, to know about texture and uh, location and what a lot of things. But those are just examples. But you don't have to lose a spouse for that because oftentimes when people retire no. and they don't have something else going on that is really challenging them, they just sit back and go, I'm done. Yeah. And that's not good for you. I mean, it's not good for your brain. It's not good for your soul. It's not good for, I mean, we're here for a reason. You might as well embrace that and enjoy it instead one, one of just of my watch. my favorite movies is The Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. And the best line from The Shawshank Redemption is one by Morgan Freeman when he says, you got to get busy living or you got to get busy dying. Mm -hmm. And right. that is the choice we all have to make every day. And that's what this argument is saying. If, if it is of interest or concern to you as you age to stay mentally acute, to grow, to embrace life, to enjoy life, to respond to the challenges of life or even to challenge life, then you got to stay active. You got to stay mentally active. You got to stay physically active and not just the little exercise. You have to push yourself to the point that it makes a difference. That's very, very important. I, I find that all those things about not being able to recall things yeah. happen to my patients when they don't have testosterone. Right. So we get a little view of what it's going to be like later. Uh, as we get older, in our 40s and 50s, when if we don't have our testosterone, we replace it. Oh, all of a sudden, our brain's back. We can recall. We can think of 
words that aren't just like four letters. <laughs> well, you mentioned an Alzheimer's. I mean, there is science that mm -hmm. proves that replacing your hormones appropriately can delay the onset. By 10 uh, years? By 10 years. With testosterone and 10 and more years for estrogen in women. So, so you can delay that, but that's just not enough if you're just going to sit there. Right. You have to use it or lose it. Exercise. My, you have my, to. You have to do things that are vibrant. That's vibrant and new. And I mean, I've. I, mean, I always thought, well, someday when I'm old, I'll paint because I painted when I was young and I love to paint. You mean like walls and, that was, and houses? Because I got. Yeah. No. No, not the kind of thing. So I mean, I've always, I always loved that, and yeah. hit medical school, and it was all over because I didn't have time for any of that stuff. So that you know, I've always thought of things that I would do if I were not doing this. So you have to kind of have dreams as well, because if you don't have dreams, you'd have nowhere to go. Exactly. So you need to have a, a, a plan. I used to do family counseling and talk to married couples about dreaming together, dreaming forward. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? How are you going to get there? What do you want when you get there? What do you want it to look like? And it's amazing how we get so myopically focused on getting through this day, this job, this promotion, this pay raise to buy a new car, to get a new house, our focus becomes so linear and myopic that we don't step back and dream. We don't see the larger mm -hmm. picture of where do we want to go as a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember my wife and I began to talk about retirement, and she's younger than I am, and so I'd be talking about... A lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> did not have to say that. Uh, you know, I want, I want to think about retirement, and she's like, I'm not ready to retire. And she wanted to have the discussion. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not That's talking me. about That's moving to, to Australia today. <laughs> I'm talking about making a plan because mm -hmm. I think having a plan really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. My wife's grandmother, you talk about the wisdom of the aging. Mm -hmm. uh, she used to say on a regular basis, I would wa rather wear out than rust out. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not just going to sit here. I'm not going to sit here and wait for death. Do not go gentle into that good mm -hmm. night. So, it's something to think about. It's something to encourage yourself and everybody that you love to do. Get busy. Get active. As Morgan Freeman says, you get busy living or you get busy dying. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.